It's a daily talk show and it's episode 262 and it's our first birthday. <laughs> I knew keeping this. Oh, shit. Oh, oh, no, don't do that. Hang on. We're doing it. Oh, jeez. <laughs> don't do it at the camera. I'm selling it. <laughs> that is funny. Uh, how are we going, everyone? My ears are ringing. Are yours? No. I would, what the fuck was wrong with mine? It's no. I, Why do I sniff everything? <laughs> and it's one of the dumber things to sniff. So what we just let off, as you could have heard, would have would have heard. Yep. Uh, some and twist poppers. They, yeah, they're like thirty centimetre long uh, confetti cannons, and there is there's some shit on the lens. I can see it, but I don't think it's on the actual. No, it's fine. Video. It's absolutely fine. Watch it is, the, watch. The, I can't wait to watch that back. But you can watch it at youtube.com forward slash the daily talk show. But happy birthday. Thank you. Um, it's the, what is it, 16th of, 17th? 16th of January. 16th of January. Far out. And uh, it feels weird. I don't think I'd be very good if I, I was a, um, a twin. Oh, sharing birthdays. Be hard. I mean, sharing it with Santa is also hard. Because all the other kids have got the, they're like, they're excited, but it's not for you. It's mm. for, them, for, for them. Well, Bodie's birthday is Valentine's Day. Yeah, I feel like that's a small enough sort of... Uh, Event yeah. like a not Bodie's birthday, but yeah. Valentine's no, Day is no. low. It's not Christmas. My grandpa lived beyond a hundred years old, and like one hundred and one. And one of the things among many that I took away from his life, other than the fact that he survived a prisoner of war camp, captured by the Japanese and lived there for three years, and half of his mates died, was that before, like in his lifetime, mm-hmm. Valentine's Day was not a thing. Really? So he's seen the the birth of. You know, that's the thing that you remember. I <laughs> know oh, that's why I said, like, along with all these amazing feats that he that he had. Okay, there is shit everywhere. Yeah, now. it's getting very sticky. Um, Good thing is I don't have headphones on. We discovered that <laughs> part of the reason that I was getting so hot, yeah, had something to do with the the headphones. Yeah, yeah, you do sweat a lot. I've um for this special occasion got out the O bike fishing t shirt. Mm-hmm. There is there is one thing about this so. Is this like do I is this tight? Does this look tight to you? Yeah, a little does bit. It, does it look uh, sort of unusually tight? Like, well, there's your nipple there. <laughs> there's a there's yeah, a thumb. You're there's, it a, hard. there's a YouTube thumbnail. <laughs> Get that, Mason. It's just like oh, oh, there we go. So I used to be into tight t-shirts. It's mm. so weird thinking about that. Like I remember back in the days, and if you were a club rat in Melbourne, there was a shop called Stevie. And Stevie was huge at one point. It was, was it fluoro a, t-shirts. Was this the scratch and sniff stuff yes, you used to get? Yeah, the mm. sc- scratch and sniff t-shirts. You just sniff the cannon again. Yeah. The um, Well, we were wondering whether these are actually legal. Yeah. Because there is like a little bit of um, firecracker sort of stuff going. It was gunpowder, dude. Yeah, that's what it's, it's called. full gunpowder. But yeah. do you think in terms of tight t-shirts, I think the fashion now is moving away from the, the – either it's my age or it's just the fashion is trending away from – Super tight T-shirts. Well, I can't wear them because, for one, I'm fat, but two, I pull. Like, I just constantly, like, I just uh, feel yeah. uncomfortable, so I'm just doing this all the yeah. time. I get which th- is the thing is, you don't, you're not drawn to wear a tight T-shirt if if you have body, if issues. your rig's not for it. But I even, I don't think my rig's mm-hmm. that for it at the moment. Are you a medium? Would you ever get a medium? This is t-shirt? medium. Okay, yeah. This is medium. I this never got to medium and feeling comfortable. Always large. Mm. But what I would love is a T-shirt that was. Large everywhere, but like a small in the arms. Yeah. God, you're specific about your teas, aren't you? But do, it's like, called a custom tea. Because it's, I think that is. So. I want to feel like I'm jacked on the arms. Yeah, true. And so it really fills it out. You know how Matt Diavella's t-shirts really fill yeah, out his arms? Yeah, his biceps that you love so much. Yeah, it's interesting. Hey, um, at one year in. Yeah. It's fucking crazy. It is weird. It's, uh. I mean, it just feels like another day. Mm. But when you think about it, it's like it's like when you're with a, a, a partner, like in a relationship, you're like, it's already been five years? Yeah, we've experimented with everything. Like we've Have sort we? of, <laughs> I don't know what else is there to do as a, as a podcast. I mean, doing video and stuff is our yeah. version of anal really, isn't it? <laughs> it's, a, it's sort of the, uh, you could, a lot of people will go through their whole lifetime and not record video on their podcast. Yeah. And as a couple, we've decided to <laughs> give it a go. Yeah, I, I, I guess I'll give you that. And Not we all discovered, do anal. and we decided <laughs> discovered when we do film the episodes, I sweat yeah. more, yeah. which we would have never have known. Yeah, otherwise. I'm, I'm definitely sweating a lot more. We're talking about um, before the show my uh, blackhead. 
Yeah, it's um, <laughs> you don't have a completely black head. It's on your nose. There was a dot yesterday, and it was a real like it was a moment we're in the office in this space. We're in kind of work mode at our desks, mm-hmm. and the, the one thing I love about you is the um, the theatricals of everyday life, mm-hmm. which bring a colour and, and a you know a vibe. But also to annoys the fuck out of you. I yeah, think definitely when we got shit to do. Everything's definitely. a content opportunity, oh, maybe. Just, uh, I got a little, little little va- just a tiny little black thing there. Yeah. Go there. On. I would never really bring that up, but now we're doing video. There. So this is a – there's so much oh. – there's so much there pressure. Got it. got it. There's so I, much – and Tommy is 100% the mate that will tell you. Oh, dude. I'll just quickly – I'll get back to the theatrics of you. But the other month we were at a, a serious shoot for a, you know, a really sort of uh, – Sensitive topic. Sensitive sort of precious – topic for a lot of people and this one woman who we were filming I just took it upon myself to just like I thought if no one says anything to her it's our problem when mm-hmm. we get back to edit it and she's got something on her tooth yeah not in the in the middle of her teeth but on her tooth I said to her oh you've just got a little black thing there you'd probably just grab that and get her off I you know I had to tell you she said, no, it's a stain. <laughs> but the thing is that she would be so used to dealing with yeah. that. It was like when I made a joke about carbohydrates to uh, Craig uh, Harper, yes. who we had on the podcast uh, early uh, last week. How many times? It, he's about three times now on the show? Yeah, maybe three or four. four. Four with the episode where uh, yes. I was spewing and it was six episodes in and I was the weak link in the duo. <laughs> it did happen. But no, he. Uh, I made a joke about I said, oh, do you want a croissant or anything, yeah. uh, Craig? We're just paying. Yeah. He said, oh, no, I'm all good. Mm. And I just sort of said to Tommy, when Craig left, I'm like, that's a good bit of gear, a bit of sort of, you know, a Harper who probably yeah. wouldn't touch them. And, you'll, <laughs> and you, you made a point that it's sort of like when people make fun of your last name jacket, saying, yeah. hey, where's your jacket, Tommy yeah. Jacket? I, if you think that's original... Yeah. Good luck to you. Because people would get it all the time. I, I'm guessing whilst it feels uncomfortable for you with the lady yeah. with the black tooth, yeah. she's dealing with it and she must be comfortable with oh, it. But you know me. I'm the ultimate at justifying and owning the owning mm. the fuck up in terms of like it's almost doubling down. Well, you know, I would have hated myself if I didn't do it. <laughs> it's like a justification. But the theatrics of what Josh did with the blackhead incident was we're working and then whoop, up. Oh, up pops Josh from his seat, hands on nose, just – it's almost it, almost yelling. I've, oh, check it. Oh, is this a blackhead? Is this a blackhead? It's, it's so what? fascinating. And I got – I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. Here we go again. I'm and trying to sort out my nose because <laughs> we uh, – like, it's been – it's gotten sunburnt over the years and I just worry that um, – So you worried it was a sunspot? Yeah. I'm I just did worried sense that, that but, I, but I, I try to sort of like – it's almost like reassure you because a blackhead yeah. is something you conspiracy, can... Conspiracy Jimmy did a shocking job of that. He Sunspot? I showed it. His, no, he didn't say Sunspot. He goes, could be cancer. Oh, jeez. So he doesn't hold back. <laughs> but the... Um, so I was showing him like, what do you think it is? He's like... And you initially got the mobile, the iPhone torch. Well, yeah. We block out the light in the studio. And <laughs> I mean, I fell into the trap. It, this is the thing. If someone says, dude, can you check this out? I'm checking it out. Mm. I'm curious. Can I, can I just say I love that on our uh, one uh, – sorry, not, I keep going to say 100th episode. On one, our one-year one year. anniversary episode, we actually have some inspectors of <laughs> asbestos here <laughs> who are actually the audience of the show. It's um, it's awesome. We've got – I mean, initially I thought they were police officers. They're holding like a um, pad and pen diary. They look like they work for the ATO maybe. <laughs> They're after it. we've cooked the books. They've found out. <laughs> it's uh, we, we they know we spent the money on the the twist popper and we claimed yeah. it. <laughs> and so uh, I showed my blackhead, and yeah. you were saying, don't, "Just don't fucking touch it." From what I could see, you were squeezing it, and I'm yelling, "Don't squeeze it! Don't squeeze it! Don't squeeze it!" Because I, I, you know, the fate of something that gets squeezed when it doesn't actually come out. Like I think there's somebody who said that something if a pimple or a blackhead's ready to go. It's getting ready, rid of it yeah. is probably a good thing mm. or at least... How do I know if it's a good thing? <sighs> if it's like ready to go? Yeah, blind pimple. There's a, you, you're playing, you're, you're flipping a coin because it could go or it won't. And so <laughs> you've done it. You Flipping so a before, coin, hey? you, you were sh- pulling your nose to the side and saying, here it is, here it is. But you'd already squeezed it. Mm-hmm. So that's the one thing I didn't know because I'm saying don't yeah, squeeze it. talking about flipping don't the coin, it. just have my coin on me. Yeah, good. Um, and so I, uh, last night... 
I could feel it sort of mm. having some issues and I had a shower. Like, I don't know. I think I've mentioned it. Yeah. I had never really washed my face. Yeah. Never been a face washer. Yeah. You're, type of guy. You're, you're a, I uh, rinse. Like I rinse my, but I'm like with my um, New Year's resolution of scalp health and sort of it's, it's going into the area of face health as well. And so I've got nice skin, yeah. but the, um, I feel like I could do some work on the face. And so. And where's it landed? What well, lands on me using? I've got like a coconut body no, no, wash. No, 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 no. The where's oh, your nose the, well, landed? The nose has landed. If you're watching the video at youtubecom forward slash the Daily Talk Show, it's turned into what could only be described as a as a nasty scab. It, it kind of looks like you're sunburnt, and I don't know how it got to that because it's an unusual sort of thing. It's like a burn. Because why? Yeah, it looks was I, it looks different. Well, I got my thumb into oh, no. my nostril oh, no. and was pushing it. To try and almost like you would uh, say if you had a dent in your car and the panel beater took the panel off and was trying to push it through. I was trying to, with enough force, push the... And I've sort of... I think what we're seeing is a bit of bruising as well. (laughs) Yeah, I know. But one of the the things on uh, personal... Not not necessarily personal hygiene. Don't know what category you'd put this in. Aftershave. Yeah, I mean... (sighs) Are you an aftershave guy? I'm 100% not, but I kind of want to be i've got a couple i've never like committed to it my brother's very much always wearing aftershaves mm-hmm. tommy d wears aftershaves yeah. there's something very thoughtful in it um here's the what thing about I, dating in the dating world were yeah, you an aftershave I, I, guy yeah i mean here's how i got my favorite aftersh- aftershave went to a local price line chemist mm-hmm. and i stumbled upon this lovely lady that worked there she's like oh dal i've got the right one for you and she fucking nailed it. It is unbelievable. I didn't um, know what links, which links. <laughs> Tiger. For, for people no. playing at home, I think it's called, what's it called in the States? Axe? I don't know. I didn't know that. I it's think different. it's called uh, Axe. Uh, so links deodorant. you can get like um, deodorant spray, which smells like the boys' locker room at a local footy club. Yeah. So it's Axe. Yeah. So this woman put me onto Dior Homme. Unbelievable. It's yeah. my favourite one. I still got it today. I always get compliments about it. When I th- and, and so, but I just don't, it's not a regular occurrence. I see it as something that's a special occasion. Like I'd feel like now I'd be sweating and I'd be hot and smelling up the room with my aftershave. And so that's not good. Is so it not better than body odour? It's a consideration. Odor? It's okay. better than body odour, but I think the solution is just uh, deodorant. <laughs> so you don't have anything. So when do you use the aftershave then? Nice occasion for me when I go out, out for dinner, even like Amy and I going out. There's like, I mean, here's the thing. I'm triggered by some of Amy's perfumes and she's uh, same. She's, oh, you're smelling something. You smell great. It's like from our early days when I'm trying to impress. And so there is that, that element. Is it not like an easy life hack then? Uh, it's just a routine, right? It's but if it, is it like one of those things where do you think that if you are wearing the aftershave, it's a bit of a come on? Like oh, Amy's like, okay. A- Amy has said to me, like as a joke, she whether she thought it or not, it might read into it. She, I had it on once. I'm just, it was like out of out of my norm, yeah. going down the shops wearing my aftershave. Where the fuck are you? Going? I don't think it was that. It was like, oh, you got aftershave on, right? Oh, why you got that on? <laughs> it makes sense. You're breaking a pattern of mm. being a stinky. Why were we wearing it? <laughs> Mate, I don't know. But I felt like I was about to do something naughty, but I didn't do anything naughty. I tell you, there is one thing, like, I know you're not an aftershave guy. Well, I used to be a, a heavy aftershave guy. Travelled around, the, around the world wearing after, like carrying that let, shit let around. Guess. CK1 was your flavour. CK1, I think, might have been... Um, CK1. CK1, me... sort of like a fogged out um, silver uh, lid. I did do CK1. Yeah, no, mate. I did the one Bali. that was uh, – No, that one I had in little bottles. There was a green aftershave. <laughs> um, I've just literally typed in green aftershave Ooh, into Google like images. Some oh, of it, it looks like, like I bet Jager. you it was like um, Dunlop or like – and Davenport or Fuck, something. I was a big dupe guy. Yeah. Do you the, remember the dupe? The blue polo. There was a polo? Yes. Yeah, that was Oh, good. this here, the polo, that one mm. there. The, the, I mean, they trigger things for people. So, um, Isimiyaki mm. was, a, was one my brother had. And the thing is, like, older brother having sort of all these nice colognes. He's that guy, still that guy. Me and my mate... Karim would be going ready to go out on a Saturday night. We'd go in and fucking steal these little things. Conspiracy Jimmy would come in and fucking get a little because don't you think there's a bit of a like there can be slutty like not to you know use Britney Spears yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> like, do you think there is fruity a fruity certain- flavor? I will say on one thing I've just said it's slutty. On the other thing, I fucking love it. <laughs> it reminds me of all the girls at school when I was about to say all the young girls, but that would sound. I was a young kid, and all the girls growing up were wearing yeah. it. So I was, it reminds me of Shred that. Shredder <laughs> <laughs> No, but the Ishi Miyagi thing. I did myself a what doozy. What's it called? Miss. Is, uh, just right. Ishi Miyagi. Is he Miyagi? Is he Miyagi? Will yeah, come yeah. up. I, so, yeah, that's it. Oh God! It looks like an aria. If you if you're in Australia, like the music award, it's a very yeah. pointy. Oh, sort that's of the female one. The other one, this one, that's the male one. Okay. Yeah. Um, great. I love it. Still, I can't go near it though, because mm-hmm. we would get so pissed, spewing all morning. And when you're still in the clothes from the night before and you're vomiting, you're getting a whiff of this sort of smoky aftershave because you got smoke on your top from when you could smoke in clubs. Yeah. And I'd just be. And just smelling it, and it just fucking it serves me right for stealing my brother's aftershave. Well, Brie has like one that's uh, some sort of oil. Oh yeah, I'm into that. And um, uh, it's str- like if you smell someone who's got the same perfume yeah. as your partner, yeah. Should you say, "Oh, you smell like my girlfriend"? What's it do for you? Because I think there's I an do, honest th- conversation. Yeah, it's just like, "Oh, you smell familiar." Uh, oh, my my what? Yeah, but I mean, what's so? For instance, what's there to gain? I, by I get a bit it? out of smelling my wife's perfume. <laughs> Sounds so funny. What does she wear? Um, Stella. There's a there's a really nice Stella one that she wears, and I fucking love it. It just reminds me of just that sort of like you know that explosive chemistry that we we you know we, the initial we have <laughs> we, 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 we have. had at the start and you know yeah. it's different now yeah. it's great um, but it reminds me of that and so does she still wear it I'm or like, no I love it yeah it's she's run out of it there's another one but I'm a big perfumed guy for my wife mm. I love it and so my point is if you're saying something like oh it's my same as my wife yeah I think it's okay. I mean, he, there's a there's a conversation around now. There's perfumes that are good for men and women together, mm-hmm. which is a kind of new thing. I, when I was younger, I, I'd never heard of that. That one there, that's it there. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So what is it called? It's a, yeah. It's called the Stella perfume Stella by Stella McCartney. Yeah, it's fuck, it's what's it's the one that Bree gets? Like she goes like a perfume, oh, like a so uh, it's like a p- oaky, piney. It's like a woody. My brother uses it. Mm. Um, Bree uses uh, it. I think Gemma Watts has it too. Yeah. Not to sound creepy, Gemma. <laughs> thanks but for no, listening. But no, that's the problem. You can sound a bit creepy going oh mm. and so this is the thing it probably feels a bit creepy when I say it because now I've admitted that I get I get off over it a bit <laughs> not like that but just yeah <laughs> like that <laughs> and so I but I think there could be a skill in being able to tell a, a certain mm. perfume mm. for instance I went to a um, can I smell you now yeah I would have nothing it's, it's slightly Slight sense. Have you, have you used some sort of aftershave? No, no. Um, but the thing is, I do have like a deodorant that's. Uh, Jason Fox got me a great uh, Mr. Pitts, which was mm. like an all natural one, and I it's, ran out of it while I was trying to. So getting a lot yeah, of messages. Uh, uh, but I, there's a scent to it that's not bad. It's like a. It's almost like a. It's either a masculine clothes wash. What's yeah. ma- what do I smell like? That's a big sniff. Yeah, you see. Uh, it sort of smells like a mix of like it's a washed T-shirt, mm. but you haven't worn it in a while. Exactly right. Yeah, like, he's got a good, a little good bit. Schnoz on there's him. A, a slight bit of dust. Yeah, in a, in a good as way. you sniffed, I smelt mothballs. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. No, um, question. Yeah. Why the fuck do all? Why do why do teachers and I, like when I was growing up in mm-hmm. primary school, they've got this perfume. It's like think about the teacher that was old and wore that perfume that stunk like shit. Mm. I mean, yeah. subjective fla- um, smells are subjective, right? Yeah. But do you remember a, te- a teacher that back in the day that would wear a scent? You're like, how do you think that? that <laughs> how do you think that is good? Well, Samantha, uh, who's a teacher who listens to the show, she should. Well, she I should think be she's out. young. She'd probably be Rock and Stella or some sort of like that new Woody Oak one. But the old school sense of like. I remember my favourite teacher used to wear a perfume that reminded me of like a car scent, but a good car yeah, scent. Yeah. That seems to be have gone out of fashion, the whole car scent sort of thing. Well, yeah, they're still around. They're, uh, my brother offered me one the other day, the thing that hangs in the middle of you. Yeah. Yeah. Christian Hull. Mm. 
has Christian Hull. Uh, he's going to be on the podcast next week. He sent. I support him on Patreon, and he sent me some key rings and stuff, and it included mm. included some car. Christian, you gave Josh asthma. <laughs> it was like we had to get rid. The problem was, but I, then again, you get asthma from a fucking deodorant can. Well, I don't like you spraying deodorant in the office. <laughs> no, it smells like a boy's locker room. It's not. It's not links. But the thing, <laughs> it's close enough. No, but the thing with um, that whole being able to tell a scent. Mm. I had a. Um, I worked out I like something in restaurants and I think that I want to double down on it in 2019. Mm. And it's I went to a Persian restaurant, love Persian mm. food. Uh, one of my best mates, Nasan, is Persian and he taught me all about the different types of Persian food. So there's kubida, which is like a, a minced lamb or beef mm, and it's yum. like with um, – they mix it with onion and they grill it mm. on a uh, like a fire thing. Then there's kashkimbadam jun, mm. which is a uh, eggplant dip with this like yeah. cheese curd thing. It's fucking delicious. We're back on another food diary. And it, 100%. And so we ended up um, – Bree and I found this Persian place, which is starting to inform where we're going to live potentially. So because I'm per- like, I like it so much. How do you decide on where you purchase your house or live? Persian joint yeah, well, restaurant. Because there's not many. Like if you're Amenities. in LA or something, a lot of options. <laughs> Melbourne, there's like three or four Persian places. Anyway. So Persian, go- what, what um, country is? Iran. Okay. And so I um, ordered uh, uh, the waiter said, have you been here before? I said, mm. um no, he said, I'll talk you through, blah, blah, blah. Mm. Anyway, it came to ordering and I closed the menu and I said, uh, could we please have one kubida and one kashkin bottom jun? Mm. He's like, oh, I thought you hadn't been here. Mm. I said, oh. He's, he's racially I profiled. Said, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I said, oh, I haven't. I've had Persian before. He goes, yeah. oh. And it gave me this real tingle where I was like, it's the same feeling of when I went to Thailand and I learned, you know, sawadi crap or kapun yeah. crap. So you got an in. Yeah. You like, you, it's impressive you think, though, I think. I mean, if there was a foreigner that came in here, you totally you knew they were like. So I'd already thought they're coming in. They don't know. They're mm-hmm. French. They got no idea about how we swing around here. So what would impress you? What would they have to say to impress you? Um, uh, Go if, fuck yourself. <laughs> I mean, oh hey guys, oh that's the A7S Mark II. That's a great camera. Th- that's less mm, but Australiana. I, so you're just talking in general. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, okay. I know what you mean. You're because the dish. Is quite out there, but maybe. But there's but something. This is their food. It's like they just see their food as their food. I think he's impressed by your pronunciation. Knowledge. It's quite good. Well, so what I'm hoping for is I was starting to think maybe I could get learn all these different dishes mm. so that when I go to all the restaurants, I can doesn't matter what food I have mm. because there's something very bogan about getting a Thai green chicken curry. Yeah, mate. When you get, I think like a, a butter chicken. When yeah. you, if you go to an Indian restaurant yeah. and get butter chicken, a Rogan Josh, you're an Australian <laughs> who is thinking they're eating Indian mm. food. Yeah, which I think it is a dish, but butter chicken is the most bogan Australian dish you could eat, and it's lovely. <laughs> so there is something about the perfume, like yeah. knowing someone's perfume is a little bit like that. It's like I'm in the know, I know what's happening, yeah. and there's an intimacy to it too because mm. they're doing a little secret spray before they come in, mm. and I'm saying, hey, you know how you're secretly spraying. Mm. I know. General uh, general knowledge is impressive. Like the person that knows the v- random shit. What is a bit of general knowledge that you know? Uh, what do I know? Mate, I don't know much. <laughs> <laughs> Come this on, is no, the, no. When you get put on the spot, you need okay. to give me like... Y- Could you uh, tell me what I'm good at general knowledge-wise? Um, Maybe tech, startup, culture. Tech, so, so I think... It's, agile. I guess it, maybe it's not general knowledge because it's not... It's specific it's knowledge, niche. yeah. Because you, like you know, founders of businesses and their background. Mm. You like know someone's resume, mm. which is impressive. So that's like freaky knowledge because you've done a bit of work there. Yeah. It's like the general knowledge is. I find history. Is that someone, flickering again? Someone I knows. Um, maybe not. Someone knows. You know, they're savvy with their history on something. Yeah, That's I can't impressive. remember because the thing is, history seems like a hard one because you fucking have to know everything that happened. Mm. Like. To understand history... Um, it's why I like conspiracy theories because someone spent a lot of time thinking about a certain angle on a certain matter. But that's why I don't feel comfortable with it is because yeah. they've gone... Because I don't know all the facts. So mm. someone could say something about, you know how World War mm. Two happened? Mm. Well, I think that they were doing this. So and it's like, well, I don't fucking know. My uncle is a very smart man, very book smart. 
And is this the uh, leisure centre owner? Yeah, he owns Albert Park Indoor Sports Centre. I wasn't going to uh, say specifics. Yeah, Hopefully. I mean, I'm giving him a plug if you want to play indoor netball or soccer. And know anything about what? He knows lots about – I just ask him shit. So when – you uh, prime ministers, mm-hmm. who, was, who was in power then, why is, why is this place called this? Like general knowledge around yeah. sort of Melbourne, um, South Melbourne Football Club, he could give you the history there, AFL, just like – all this shit, which is like, I could just come up with a bunch of questions and he's got answers for them. I think uh, uh, Scooter Derek, I reckon, would have a bit yeah. of that. He seems like he's knows, he'd be able to say, oh, that person mm. owned the milk bar and then it became mm. this person and that person owns the lease of that place. Well, local knowledge. I mean, do you just want to learn another language or you want to... No, 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 no. I don't have the time to learn another <laughs> language. Well, I'm saying, but We've if got could, five days of podcasting to do. But if we could learn something more specific mm. in the culture, mm. say it's like woven things made in Turkey mm. and I could say, oh, that's a fucking side stitch you've done Who's there. Who's it for? I mean, are you, cause, because there's an element of and maybe I don't, I don't know if people who possess all this general knowledge, it's their thinking behind knowing this stuff and that's I can impress people. I'll give you an example. Because are you doing it to impress people? Mm. I, I, I try to impress. <laughs> because I, it's impressive. It did a good, I did a good job of it the other day. We had um, bowls, which I've spoken to you already about. Hang on. Are we – this is thir- – bowls? Bowls meaning – Lawn bowls. Oh, I thought the bowl from two days ago was – With Jack. <laughs> well, I picked up the bowl <laughs> from Jack's place. No. So uh, Bree asked me – she said, do you want to come to uh, – my friend's got a – a party we're mm. going to lawn bowls do you want to come yeah. i said no and she said well, okay Kat, will you will you come i said if you want me to come she goes no you have to want to come and i'm like okay i'll come that's yeah. the thing i was getting so anyway <laughs> that was fine Good that boy. was that was one that was one bit of it anyway then she says to me the next day she says oh by the way it's a white theme you have to wear all white mm. she said i've spoken to the birthday girl and she said that you can wear what you normally wear if you want. You just can't be in the photo. And I'm just like, Are you taking I don't the photo? want to be that fucking guy. I don't want to be the one. Like, so I'm like, okay, if I'm fucking doing it, I'm going to have to. So I ended up dropping 110 bucks on Get some, fuck, some you didn't tell me this. van white shoes. That's why you've been getting all that yeah. spam mail yeah. from vans. Flicker. And then the, do you want to try and fix it, Mason? We've got like a little yeah. flicker. Just try Production turning problem. it, Production turning the light goes. a little bit. Just uh, yep. just the little connector. I yeah. just don't want it flickering. Um, we should use the battery in the future. Mm, anyway, idea. the um, uh, so I got some van shoes, some white van shoes. So which you're 110 deep. Yeah. Then on a, a party you don't want yeah, to go to. A linen <laughs> and a linen white shirt from um, Uniqlo. Fuck Uniqlo. Shout out to Uniqlo. Great products. But are you going to wear it again? Yeah. So uh, potentially, I yeah. think so. So the Uniqlo thing was I 70 just, bucks. So it was about. I just threw out a white shirt that I bought for a party that I've never used again. It's a chance, like very specific white sh- short sleeve, long sleeve. Okay. So I can. If sort you of, haven't got one, it's fine. I think it's a little bit like um, Richard Branson-y on the like. Uh, it could be you know on a fucking holiday somewhere, <laughs> chest open a little bit, maybe a little bit Italian. Anyway, <laughs> so I um, I Minus bought all the of billion this dollars, stuff, and then. Um, I said, who's going to the next day, mm. the day before on the Friday, it's happening on the Saturday. I said, who's going to be there? And Brie goes, oh, I'm not going to know that many people. I'm like, why? And she said, it's a joint party. Mm, there were okay. two fucking birthday so girls. So Brie knew one of them. Yeah. And then there's this, okay, yeah. And so that's, you, I mean, and for, for you, that's anxiety. I fucking nailed it though. The, the friend wrote back that I was the MVP, which is great. But one of the things I did with the lawn bowls is we were getting shown how to use the, the lawn bowls and yeah. stuff. I said to the old guy, I said, is the, is the uh, lawn running fast or slow? <laughs> he goes, oh, this one's a bit slow. That one's fast. And so, so you'd, you'd read up on something and worked it. I like it. I like That's it. Good. Bit of general knowledge for the circumstance and environment mm. that you're in is a good way to learn. Yes. Uh, um, one year. Yeah, uh, that's the final. We've got that's the final seconds. bit. Uh, thank you for listening, everyone. Uh, <laughs> shout out to BK yeah. uh, for sending us an email. He says, "Congrats on one year." His favorite bits: Fat Fridays at Easy's, Fun. Hamgate, yeah. Hamish episode, Jules episode, hurtful because they happened early on. Yeah, anyway, it's the Daily Talk Show. Hi at the Daily Talk Show if you want to send us an email. Otherwise, <laughs> we're See off guys. to uh, blow some whistles. <laughs> <laughs>